Hi, my name is Erfan Vafai and I'm with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension. It's not too uncommon where when we're giving a presentation to an audience, we want to pull them in order to find out uh, how much they've learned, where they're at, and in order to get some feedback from our audience. This isn't unlike using something like clickers that you can buy, but that involves having to buy and maintain this hardware, transport it around, maintain it, and it has some costs associated with it. And so some of the solutions I was looking at was really trying to leverage some of the current online resources in order to do effective online audience polling. And so some of the criteria I was looking at is that the solution has to be cheap, has to be easy to use, it can't require any additional hardware. So I didn't want anything that required buying, buying clickers or any kind of expensive equipment that I had to carry around. It provides live responses, so I want to be able to pull them live in a talk and then be able to discuss that with the group if necessary. And it has to be really easy for users to access. So some of the systems that uh, I'm going to be discussing include Kahoot, Socrative, and Participol. And I'm going to do some honorable mention, mentions of mClicker and Plickers. We'll kind of go through these. So Kahoot, uh, make learning awesome. So you can actually uh, go to the website and you can uh, sign up for free. It is a free platform. And uh, what's nice about it, it was actually developed by the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. It is uh, funded and owned by a team of scientists or researchers there, and it's continually funded through grants from the Norwegian Research Council. And uh, the, currently the service is free, but uh, they are planning on adding some value-added services and products in the future. Uh, so you sign in as you would, uh, you know, once, once you've kind of created your account. And here's what it looks like in the back end. And you can either do a quiz, discussion, or a survey. All of three of these, in essence, are very similar. They just display the answers differently. Uh, so some of them might display the answer right after your students answer it, whereas others might just kind of not show the answer. So it acts like more of a survey. So it really depends on kind of how you want to use this, uh, use this tool. So you first, you have to create your new Kahoot, you create a new quiz or whatnot, and this is kind of what it looks like. You add a title, a description, you can do hashtags, and I'll show you why in a moment, because you can actually tag them for people, other people to search and use if you'd like to. So you'll see, you can actually make it visible to everyone. So anyone else on Kahoot can actually access your quiz. Uh, you know, it's also asked that you add your target audience, so whether it's for kids or adults. Um, and then you can also add a little intro video, which is kind of fun. These are what the questions look like when actually entering the questions. And I would say one of the major drawbacks for Kahoot is the types of questions you can ask. So the only types of questions you can ask are multiple choice and uh, a minimum of two options. Obviously one option, multiple choice would defeat the purpose of it, if it being a multiple. And the maximum number is four. So you have to do between two and four answers in this multiple choice question. You add a time limit, so how much time the students have to answer. You can add an image or a video associated with the question. And you can also credit your sources as well. So this is just an example here, what type of organism is in this, uh, sorry, is this photo from? I've given a time limit. You can also award points. So if students get the question right, and they kind of get points, and it's almost like a competitive kind of quiz, which makes it kind of fun. And uh, as you can see here, you can mark off which one is the correct or which one is the uh, not correct answer. And this one is a piece of a spider, uh, Microthena gracilis. And then when you have all your questions kind of put together, you have this uh, full kind of quiz that you can then launch. So here you can see now, let's say I'm doing this Nacogdoches uh, County program. This was a, a quiz that I did for one of my audiences. When you hit play, it asks you, how do you want to play it? So there's two different ways. One, you can do player versus player. So if you know most of your audience has their own smart device, then you can do this player versus player. And everyone pulls out their smartphone and, and plays uh, you know, at their own pace or as their own person. Alternatively, if there are limited devices, then you can do team versus team. And you can actually have your audience kind of split into these two teams and they consult the answer and they have one smart device shared within each team that, that they use to answer. And you can enable some of these other options like a streak bonus. So if you get multiple questions right in a row, you start getting more points. 
Uh, you can randomize the, the question or answer order and so on and so forth. Now, once you launch it, you get this big uh, screen right here that says, you know, join at Kahoot.it. So anyone with a smart device goes to Kahoot.it and enters that game pin. And uh, it's very straightforward. So this is what it looks like on the mobile device. You go there, you put in that game pin, you hit enter, uh, and you can give yourself a little alias. Uh, so for example, here, there's two players that have joined. One is myself, Airfon, and another one is Khan from Star Trek. And I'm about to compete with him. And so this is what it looks like when you actually have a question. So it'll first display the question. It'll tell you how many points uh, one can get for getting it correctly. And then it'll actually display, display the uh, potential answers. So here's an example, which of the following is non-ideal conditions for a grasshopper outbreak. And you'll see with each of those four answers, multiple choice answers, there is a color and a shape associated with it. And that's how users answer on their smart device. So you'll see here on the right side, that's what it looks like on a mobile phone. You get that shape and that color. You don't get the full question on your phone and you also don't get the actual answer on your phone. You just get the shapes and colors associated with what's on the screen. And so once you answer, it'll tell you whether you got it right or, or wrong, what rank you're in, and it also gives you overall score, which is kind of neat. And up on the big screen, it'll actually show the overall results, so you can discuss that with the whole group. At the very end, it'll tell you the overall final scoreboard, which again is kind of fun. And then you can actually download those results on the uh, mobile device. Anyone who did that quiz can actually rate uh, that Kahoot, rate that quiz. Uh, which kind of helps with the ranking of that quiz for other people who may want to use it online. Now the nice thing is you'll actually get, so if you actually export this data, it'll actually uh, highlight in green all the correct answers and in red the ones that were answered incorrectly. And uh, uh, I think that's, yeah, that is right. And uh, you can see here it actually gives a nice summary of the results. So you can go back in afterwards and analyze this uh, to show kind of progress in learning or, or knowledge acquired by your audience. And again, so the really neat thing, and why I mentioned you want to add those hashtags in the description, is because you can go in and search. So here I've searched in Kahoot pest management, and there are several people who have already created quizzes on pest management and integrated pest management. So I might not even need to create my own quiz. I can go in there, search some different quizzes, decide one of them that I like, and I can use that in my, my audience or in my class. They also have a mobile app as well, uh, which, which can be handy. You can have over 4,000 players at one time reportedly, which is, uh, which is insane. So you could have an auditorium full of, uh, you know, a whole stadium full of people doing this Kahoot. And you can suggest improvements and suggestions on their forum, which is nice. So they're uh, constantly developing this. All right, so next we're going into Socrative, and uh, this is currently the one that I'm using a bit more because it gives you a few more options in terms of how you can uh, answer questions. So you'll see on the back end, once you log in, you can either do a quick question. So if you're in the middle of a talk and you wanna do a quick question, you can click multiple choice, true, false, short answer, quickly create the question and fire it up, and people can answer right then. Or you can fire up a quiz that you've pre-made, or you can do space race, and I'll explain what that is in a moment. It's kind of a fun one. When you go into quiz, you can see you can either create a quiz, look at your quizzes, look at your reports, or import a quiz. So here's my list of quizzes. Uh, I, can, I can choose one. And this is kind of what it looks like in the back end. You can see my list of questions, number 16 and 17. These are true and false questions. And you can uh, add pictures associated with the questions, identify which one is correct or false, and also add an explanation as to why the answer is what it is. So that as soon as uh, students answer, they can get an explanation for why that is the correct answer. And here's what, what it looks like when you're creating a question. Very straightforward. You can do more than just uh, you know five or six uh, multiple choice. You can do several. So you'll see in that option it says add answer. And on the very far right, you can check off the ones that are correct. You can add an image associated with it. Uh, and you can add that explanation at the very bottom as well. And then when you're actually firing up the quiz, there's a few different ways you can fire it up again. Uh, and essentially it depends on how, you know, what the purpose of your quiz is. You can make it so that students use their smartphones and just go through the quiz themselves and you collect the results or show all the results on the board at the end. 
or it might be that you want them to answer one question at a time. So when they answer it, it basically says, wait for teacher. And then when everyone has kind of answered or enough people have answered, the teacher can say finish and it shows the results for that question. So you can discuss it before you move on to the next question. So here's what it looks like on an actual mobile device. So you'll go to b.socrative.com as a student. You'll see at the very top of my screen, it says six-legged Aggie. So I've actually created that little room name. And so on their mobile devices, they just have to type in that name, six-legged Aggie, hit join, and that brings them into my quiz. And again, they can add their own alias. And as students start answering, it'll tell me right on, on, on my uh, website, it'll tell me how many students have answered. So here's 10 out of 14 students have answered. And this again, I'll usually project up on the screen. And then you can hit that, how'd we do? And it'll tell you right away, give you a nice quick result. So you'll see 90% of the students got the correct answer, which is green. Uh, and there was some questions that got the answer incorrectly. What's nice is on the mobile device, it actually shows them the full question, even the image, and then also uh, the full answers. So they could actually click on that image as well on the mobile device and it'll enlarge in it so they can see it right there on the mobile device in case the projector is too far and they can answer directly on there. Now this one's kind of neat, uh, the space race I, I said earlier. So you can actually do a competition in your room to make it a little bit more fun. You can split up uh, the audience into teams. You can select the number of teams. You can make it automatically assign them or you can manually assign them. And you have a little race icon as well. And how it works is essentially they all start answering the questions at their own pace on their phones. And as uh, members on that team answer correctly, their icon, their little spaceship or whatever it might be moves forward. And so it's a little quick little competition where they're constantly looking up the board to see how they're doing and, and constantly uh, you know, incentivize or motivated to answer all these questions. When the quiz is done, again, you can export these answers as well, which is really nice for uh, an audience polling analytics. And it does an excellent job at displaying um, all the different answers from the different students. So you'll see here, I've uh, unchecked showing the names at the very top left, so you can anonymize it if you're just trying to show a general audience uh, how everyone did. Or you can show the names when you want to download it yourself so that you can, again, do those uh, analytics. This is what the Excel looks like. Again, green if it's correct, red if it's incorrect. Uh, gives you their total score and number of correct answers. And this way, again, you can analyze um, you know, how, how everyone did and how they learn, learned and, and developed throughout your talk or your program. And here are uh, you know, all of your, your quiz results are basically saved uh, on Socrative in the back end. So you can always go back and uh, see uh, some of your results. And there's an app both for uh, students and for the teacher. So the teacher app helps you actually launch uh, these different quizzes if you would just want to do it from your phone. And the student app, uh, you know, it just basically helps streamline some of this stuff so they don't have to go to b.socrative.com. But uh, they don't need an app. So if you're just quickly firing this up in a one-time group, you're not going to ask them to, to download the app you're just gonna ask them to go to that web link because it's not gonna make sense for people to go to the app, download the app, and, and so on and so forth. It's just uh, too lengthy of a process and you'll lose some of your people in that process. Uh, what's nice is, again, it's, it's currently free uh, and you can have one public room for your classes. So you can have one room at any given time, which is more than what you would need. And you can have 50 students uh, at a, in a given session. So if you typically have more than 50 students or 50 uh, people in your group, you might need to upgrade to the Pro, uh, which can allow up to 150 people uh, within a, in a room. And that's uh, now $50 a year, which I think is a very reasonable price for what it offers. Now this next one, Participol, has a great advantage over those last two that we discussed in that it actually integrates into PowerPoint. So Socrative and Kahoot, you'd have to go into the web browser and display that up on your uh, screen while you're doing a presentation. And really it's gonna kind of break up your presentation. So you can't do questions kind of integrated in your talk. You'd kind of do some questions at the very beginning or maybe at the very end, but you can't really splice them in between and kind of uh, you know break up your flow of your presentation. Participle, on the other hand, it's integrated into PowerPoint. 
And how it works is, you know, you create your login. They give you a free trial of about 20 days or so, or 30 days maybe. Uh, so this is actually, you know, they don't have a free version, forever version. You do need to uh, pay for a subscription service. And this is what it looks like. So they actually give you a little plugin that you install into your PowerPoint. This is compatible with Office 2016 for Mac or Office 2010, 13, 2016, and 365 for PC. So you need to have one of those in order for this to work well for, with your PowerPoint. And also keep in mind that if you're presenting at, a, at someone else's venue, if they don't have Participol installed on their computer, this isn't going to work. So you'd have to really have it on your own, uh, your own computer installed and, and ready, to, ready to go. Uh, and you can see there, there's a spot to insert a poll. So you would insert a poll into your presentation. And it gives you a number of different types of options. So you can do uh, a two answer, three answer, four, five, or six. Uh, you can't quite do a text answer. They said it allows for live comments, participate poll. I haven't quite seen that work very effectively yet, but again, I only had the free trial and didn't play with it much beyond that. And this is kind of what it looks like. So when you insert that poll, uh, it puts the series of boxes at the bottom right, A, B, C, D, and you just add your own text. So uh, here as an example, I've just added my own A, B, C, D, and you have people answer, and when they do, uh, it'll, it'll show up. So here I hit the start polling. So before you start your entire PowerPoint, you hit that start polling so that it basically, you know, participant knows that you are now activating the presentation and you want to record polls. And it brings up this little thing. You have to log in to your participant account through PowerPoint and it says polling has started. You can now start your presentation. And it says uh, what kind of, so this is just an example here. Uh, and, and sorry, and actually I failed to mention uh, so this is how people will actually join your participant poll to be able to actually vote. So you see, I've created my own voting address, sixleggedaggy.particippoll.com. So everyone on the mobile devices would have to go to that web link, and then they'd be able to uh, vote along. So here is an example. Again, I've created this A through E question. And after people answer, it'll give the live responses right within PowerPoint. It's kind of animated. So when you click to the next slide, it'll uh, automatically populate those boxes and tell you how many people total voted. And this is what it looks like on the mobile device for the trial version. Uh, and see, you can, you can see all the full options here. You can ask the presenter something. So that's the comments, like I said earlier. And, um, you know, this is kind of somewhat Kahoot and that doesn't give the full question or the full answer on the mobile device. It just gives kind of the A, B, C, D, E, or, or in this case, F, uh, that you can select. And then in terms of analytics or results, they're a little bit harder to interpret. So what it does on the participal website is uh, it'll provide uh, the, the, pres the name of the PowerPoint presentation. So my PowerPoint presentation was called hightunnel.pptx, and this is on the fourth slide. So if I want to go back and analyze this to know whether people learned about uh, you know, leaf-footed bugs, I have to go look back at which slide that was on, which one was the correct answer, and kind of analyze that a little bit manually. So it gives a, it, it causes, it results in a lot more work in terms of doing analytics on uh, your, your audience. And you can see on the far right there, uh, some of the, one of the comments by one of the audience members, it wasn't produced live, but rather it was kind of saved uh, save for afterwards. And I can download those results. I can download the comments as well from each of those sessions. And this is what it looks like in Excel. Again, uh, it'll tell me uh, which presentation it was in, which slide, and, and uh, how many answers for each option. But uh, I really don't know which one's the correct answer. It doesn't give me uh, per the, the answers per individual, so I can't track certain individuals to see how they did. And if you really want to use this option, you're, you're looking at $100 a year uh, minimum. I mean, you can do a 14-day trial, uh, but then after that, it expires. So um, really, you'd, you'd have to go. With, you'd have to have funding or some kind of money to pay for this for $100 a year. Uh, but the nice thing is it allows for unlimited polls and votes, uh, which which is which is pretty nice. Now I want to do this mention of M Clicker. The reason being, because uh, again, mClicker is uh, like a lot of these other services is currently free, um, which is really nice. And what's nice is actually 
it gives you several options of types of questions. So you can do multiple choice, you can do multiple multiple choice, you can do multiple choice open-ended, you can do numbered responses, text responses. You can also make it so that people have actually slides within the question. So the question might be multiple pages before they answer. Uh, and that allows it to almost become like a standalone educational tool where you can use this, you know, kind of in a live setting to, to see how people progress. It's really quite neat in that type of way. It also gives you very versatile ways of displaying the way that people have given you uh, answers. It claims, now this is the tricky part, it'll say that it can do PowerPoint live updates. And this is true, but with some great limitations. Uh, you have to do it with this program called UMFO, is, is how they tell you to do it. And UMFO is currently only compatible uh, with Microsoft Office. Uh, and that's Office 2003, 2007, 2010, and 2013. Uh, it is not compatible with uh, Office 365 or some of the newer ones. It is not compatible with Mac. And all I've seen so far is that you need to have the 32-bit version of Windows in order to run it. So it actually does not work um, otherwise. So, I mean, they say it can do PowerPoint Live updates, but um, I don't consider that it can because there are so many limitations on how you can potentially get PowerPoint Live updates. And what's neat about it, this is constantly evolving and improving substantially. I've seen mClicker make some uh, pretty substantial improvement, which is really, uh, really cool. And this is an example of how you can display some results, which is very versatile. You can actually have display results as a word cloud. So if people are giving in uh, text responses, it, you know the the words that are the most common will actually be the largest, and the words that are you know least used the least will be very small, and it'll just automatically populate and create this word cloud for you as a really neat way to uh, pull the audience and display what they are thinking. Some other examples of things you can include in questions include videos. You can actually have a video integrated right in the question. And you can see here that the video is actually on the mobile device as well. So it's not displayed only on the PowerPoint. And you can see this is an example of the slides. So you can actually, you know, there's a photo and almost a, ser a whole series of information. And then there's a question following it. One of the major drawbacks for mClicker at the moment, so other than you know not really having PowerPoint integration, I don't consider that a major drawback because Kahoot and Socrative have that same drawback. But the thing is on the back end, it's not very user friendly. It has a very a relatively steep learning curve. So you need to spend some more time learning how to use it uh, before you can really create some um, you know meaningful slides and, and um, polling questions. However, you know, on the user end, uh, for the audience, it's, it's straightforward, just like all the other programs. But it's really just, it has a steeper learning curve on the back end. And another honorable mention I want to make is uh, Plickers. And this one's kind of neat. If you have a classroom full, especially if you have young kids that don't have uh, smartphones, then this might be a viable option. And essentially eliminates the need for a smartphone and all your, uh, your, your students. This is also a free one. And all you need is just one smartphone or one smart device where you can download this app, uh, which is available both for uh, iPhones or for Androids. And how it works is it essentially it uses these uh, cards, and that's the program right there. And you can download these card sheets for free, uh, and you can print them yourself, or you can actually buy them on some thicker card stock. The largest number of students you can do with this is currently 63. And this is basically what the cards look like. So it's a unique shape to the student, so that the app can recognize a unique shape associated with each student, and the orientation of the shape says which answer they're giving, so A, B, C, or D. So there's basically four uh, uh, potential options, and it's multiple choice. Here's an example. You can buy these on Amazon as well if you don't want to have to print your own or uh, you know, put them on special cardstock or whatnot. This is so you can kind of reuse them over and over. This is what it looks like. So as long as uh, you know your students all are holding up that card and is visible uh, to that one camera, that one smartphone that you're using, it can pick up all the responses and display them for you. And this is how it looks like on your smartphone. So once you do that, you collect all the results and immediately tell you how everyone's doing so it can display those results right away. Some of the major drawbacks being it currently does not have a way to export the data or, or, or run a report, uh, run reports for analysis. 
and currently you can't really display that to my knowledge you can't quickly display that up on a PowerPoint or up on the board if you wanted to show students how they're doing and discuss a question uh, so it is currently free and they will add premium version with added features in the future that is all I got in terms of audi audience polling made fun. Uh, again, I uh, hope this is kind of helpful for you as I know it has been for me when I'm polling my audience. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to let me know.